James Bull, Lieutenant Colonel 126 New York Infantry, notes in his July 8th after battle report of Willard's Brigade's attack on a swale or underbrush. He notes, as is evident to the expectations of the brigade commander, the rebels in considerable force were found in the underbrush. They fired upon the brigade as it advanced, which fire was returned by a portion of the brigade without halting. Many fell in the charge through the woods. Reaching the base of the hill, the brigade advanced at a charge bayonets up the hill mentioned, and within a few minutes recaptured part of the battery previously taken from us. After taking the battery, the brigade continued to advance under fire of a battery higher up the hill on the left and a concentric fire of musketry on the right. The commander, finding his brigade unable to stand so severe a fire, ordered the regiment to retire, which was done in good order down the hill and through the underbrush before mentioned. After emerging from the underbrush, the line was reformed by direction of Colonel Willard and immediately afterward, he was killed by a shot from a rebel battery on the hill. Chaplain Ezra Simons, during the dedication address of the 125th New York Infantry Monument at Gettysburg in October of 1888, would note following the fighting on July 2nd, as night settled down upon the scene, our regiment was returned to its position on Cemetery Hill. But he returned not with us, who had led us gallantly, coolly, as a writer was witness, down into that fiery vortex, and not all of those came back who had gone forth. With over 100 of our regiment cut down in the brief space of half an hour, had fallen our brave, skilled, and loved Colonel. Willard was dead. He was struck just after the brigade had, by orders, fallen back east of the swale through which it had just charged and driven the rebels. A piece of shell carried away a part of his face and head, and he fell from his horse, instantly killed. His body was taken to the fray house, the ground and barn of which were used as a hospital, as were many of those houses in near vicinity of the field. That house and barn were on the field and were on the following day exposed to the fire of the rebel guns, shells from which exploded on the premises. The body was carefully wrapped in linen clothing and was last seen by the writer as it was lying on the ground ready for faithful and loving hands to bear it homeward to an afflicted wife and kindred. of the late Colonel George L. Willard of the 125th Regiment, who fell in Thursday's battle, reached Troy at a late hour last evening in charge of Private Wiseman and were immediately taken to the residence of Honorable Eliza Plum. Colonel Willard, while riding at the head of his brigade, was struck by a shell which tore the angle of his mouth and shattered his chin and shoulder. He fell from his horse which galloped into the rebel lines at full speed. The gallant rider was dead when taken from the ground. The funeral of the late George Lamb Willard, commanding the 3rd Brigade, 3rd Division, 2nd Army Corps, who fell on Thursday last at the Battle of Gettysburg, took place this morning from the residence of Honorable Eliza Plum, father-in-law of the deceased officer in 2nd Street. More imposing ceremonies have rarely been witnessed. A large procession of military, the common council of two cities, with numerous friends and relatives, 
contributed to form an unusual large assemblage. The remains of the lamented dead repose in an elegant burial casket, which was guarded by the faithful servant of the deceased, Private Wiseman. The glass case was covered with a profusion of natural flowers. The upper part of the face looked quite natural, but the lower portion was covered to hide the wound, which in an instant changed the heroic leader to a pale corpse. Many hundreds of persons availed themselves of the opportunity to gaze upon the features of the departed hero. Indeed, it was with difficulty that order was preserved among the throng that crowded about the coffin. Thus were the last honors paid to one of the noblest victims of the struggle for the Union. He fell while resisting the advance of a desperate foe at the threshold of a sister state. 
he reposes among friends in beautiful Oakwood. Citizens who honored his military talents and respected his private character while living have paid the last tribute to the gallant dead. And when the echoes of this fearful conflict die away and the names of the slain stand as an enduring record, the page will be a bright one that will contain the letters of living light, the name of Colonel George L. Willard.